In this video, we will cover how to manage file executions globally in Cortex XDR user interface. You can manage file executions on your endpoints using file hashes in your allow and block lists. This can be performed using Action Center in Cortex XDR by navigating to Incident Response, Response, and clicking on Action Center. The landing page of Action Center contains a list of all previously executed actions. On the menu on the left, you will notice two entries, Block List and Allow List. These provide you with the ability to block or allow files to execute globally on your XDR tenant. You can view the list of all hashes that are blocked from executing on your tenant by clicking on the Block List link. Similarly, you can view the list of all globally allowed hashes by clicking on the allow list link. So let's start by adding a new hash to the allow list. In order to do that, we need to click on the new action button located on the top right and then select the appropriate action. In this case, our action is to allow the Google Chrome installer to the allow list. Enter the hash of the binary to the field and then click on enter for it to be added to the list and then provide a comment describing the reasons for adding the hash to the allow list. Upon clicking next, the summary about the action that will be executed is shown. In our case, this is the hash that we want to be added to the allow list. Upon clicking Done, we will receive a confirmation that this hash has been successfully added to the allow list. Similarly, if you always want to block a file from executing on any of your endpoints, you can add the associated hash to the block list. As an example, we want to block an outdated Java binary from executing on all endpoints. So let's click on New Action, select the action select the add to block list entry and provide a SHA-256 hash of the Java binary. Click enter and then provide brief comments explaining the reason. Click next and then click done for the hash to be added to, to the block list. Adding files to the allow and block list takes precedence of any policy rules that may have been otherwise applied to these files. Another way of inserting hashes into the allow or block list is via the incident section. So let's go and take a look at one of the incidents. We need to navigate to incident response and click on incidents. And let's pick an incident that has been generated by Cortex XDR. Inside the incident section on the right, we can see all the key artifacts that are associated with that incident. If we need to block one of the hashes that are part of the key artifacts, we can click on the three vertical dots next to the artifact and then click on add to block list. We will provide a comment for our action. Potential malware needs investigation. On clicking yes, the hash will be successfully added to the block list.